Well, Happy New Year, Table family. How many believe that God wants to do more in 2024? Sound a little bit like Dr. Seuss this morning. Uh, but I do believe that God has the best yet to come for us. I, I don't know, what does Christmas week look like for you? But our family had an amazing time together. We ate too much food. We played games, watched movies, and just celebrated the joy that Jesus brings in our lives. Uh, I ate so many gingerbread cookies. I told my husband, I'm like, honey, I might be having a gingerbread baby. I feel like here's a little life hack for you. Just stay away from the scale for the next few days, right? Until things settle down a little bit and you get back into your regular rhythms, you know. Follow me for more tips. Um, (laughs) But we have a lot to celebrate uh, when we look back on what God did this past year. When I was working on my doctorate at Seattle University, I I came across uh, an interesting word. Uh, And the word is Sankofa. Am I saying it right? Sankofa. Uh, And it's a word in the Twi language of Ghana. And and it's literally translated to go back and get, to go back and retrieve something. Okay? Okay. So, so here's the interesting thing. In art, uh, this is the Sankofa bird, and in art, it shows this bird that has his feet going forward, but he's looking back. I, I don't know about you, but that's kind of how I feel on New Year's Eve, right? Uh, I'm looking back, and I'm reflecting on all the amazing things that God did this past year, but at the same time, I'm kind of looking forward, and I'm thinking, God, what, what do you want to do ahead in the year ahead? I took a a day prayer retreat this week. I always take one day in the middle of Christmas and New Year's to just get alone with Jesus. I take my journal, my Bible, I turn off my phone, and I'm like, Lord, just, just speak to me. And I wrote about 10 pages in my journal, and I started writing just the amazing things that God did in this past year. I start looking back, and, and you can ask yourself these questions too, like what worked and what didn't? right? Uh, What relationships were life-giving, and what were the ones that just drained me maybe just a little bit too much? What were the good financial choices that I made, and what were some things that I kind of wasted my money? I could have done that a little differently and ended the year, you know, a little bit more uh, in the bank. Uh, But at the same time, I also like to look ahead and say, okay, God, it's kind of like a blank page, right? That's what I love about New Year's. You just get a fresh start. It's a new day. It's a new year uh, full of opportunity and anticipation. But I ask God, uh, what do you want to do in the year ahead? Where will I travel? Where will I go this year? Greg and I spent about an hour together yesterday. He gets out his calendar. I get out my calendar and I'm telling him, hey, honey, this week I'm going to be going here. I'll be traveling to Arizona. He's like, hey, this week I'm going here. I'll be in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. And so I know what we know where each other is going. We get to we get to go to Boston this year. I've never been to Boston. I'm speaking at a conference in Boston uh, to a group of pastors. So we spent the year just kind of dreaming about where God uh, was going to send us. You know, I I like this word when you talk about looking back, the word remember. Did you know the word remember is in the Old Testament alone 240 times, the word remember. God wants us to remember. Uh, And the beautiful thing is when we look in scripture, even Mary said in the Magnificat that she will give God praise because God remembered to be merciful. The prophet Samuel, he would set up these stones and call them Ebenezer. He said because they wanted their kids and their grandkids to know and remember the good things that God had done. Uh, Even Jesus, what did he say at the Last Supper? He said, do this in remembrance of me. At our house, we have a Christmas tree. It's full of photos over the years because we want to remember the good things God has done all over the years. Uh, And at the same time, it's good to look forward. I love what Paul says. Uh, He says this in Philippians 3.13. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on one thing, forgetting what is past and looking forward to what lies ahead. So at the same time, Paul's saying, hey, we can't live back there, right? We can remember it, but we don't want to live there, 
right? And he says, I want to move forward into all that God has for me. It's kind of like when we're driving our car. How many know you need your rear view mirror? You need to know what's going on behind you, right? But you also need your windshield because uh, you are moving forward and you want to know what's in front of you. Uh, we're going to talk about how we can look back. We're going to do a little Sankofa today. How can we look back so that we can look forward into what God has for our lives? And I want to invite uh, pastors Ariana and Brandon to the table this morning. <laughs> Happy New Year, you two. Happy New Year. Hey, I got you a little noisemaker, so... We can kind of kick up the party. The I know it's not bold. midnight yet, but we're going <laughs> we're gonna to get an early start uh, before midnight. Uh, but how do you guys look back and, and kind of look back and move forward at this time of year? What's that look like for you? Um, I, had a, I had a history teacher in high school that um, really was one of those teachers that loved history, one of those like exciting teachers. And, <laughs> um I don't know, you have, like, dads that are, like, into World War II. So, right. like, why, are you, why do you care about this, you know, the history? Yeah. But this teacher was really, uh, he kind of put it in perspective. He said that, you know, history um, informs the present, right? So That's our right. past informs the present. That's right. So we shouldn't ignore the past because, yeah. you know, it got us to where we are right now. That's so right. yeah, I kind of yeah. have that same principle when you look at the new year. That's is good. like, you know, you want to look at where you were this year because it kind of might inform your yeah. goals for the next year. So. Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. I heard about a really interesting study by this researcher named Richard Leader. And he did this study with groups of 80-year-old people to talk about what in your life you're, do you look back on and say, I wish I did that differently. And there are a few overwhelming responses. Some you might expect, like, I wish I took more risks. I wish I was more courageous. This one really stood out to me, though. Uh, they also said, I wish I took, I took more time to just pause and reflect mm -hmm. on life, wow. to look back and, like, let it inform my present, being like, yeah. man, I wish I would have done this differently this year. I, like, remember things that have happened this past year. And just taking a moment of reflection can be really, really beneficial, so good. much so that they said, I wish I did that more in life. That's so good. that's something that I feel like I try to do um, at the new year. I try to look back and say, man, what has God done? What are all the things yeah. that, all the places God was growing in? I look back at my goals that yeah. I had the past year and say, man, was this yeah. my plan or was this God's plan? Right. Were there some parts right. of my right. plans that aligned with God's plan? Some yeah. other right. things that maybe didn't happen this year that were God's will, you know, some things that God did that I didn't expect, right? Yeah. So it's, I, I love looking back because it allows me to look for it. When That's I think good. about things that God has done, I'm like, well, where is God taking me this year? That's right. Good. Yeah, well, we're going to take a few minutes and I want to ask us this question. What does scripture say about this concept of Sankofa? How, what does scripture say about looking back and looking forward? What do Paul and the prophets and even Jesus have to say? So, Brandon, kick us off. Yeah, you know, sometimes I think it's, we don't want to look back because it's... Sometimes it's depressing, It's a little right? bit hard There's, to yeah, look back. Sometimes you want to forget that. There's some <laughs> yeah, decisions yeah. you made, some hairstyles, some outfits <laughs> that you're like... Ooh. Why did I ever think that was okay? Uh, maybe even, you know, go a little deeper. Maybe some relationships and financial right. decisions right. and, yeah. yeah, just some personal choices where it's like, I don't know, I don't like looking back at that, right? So we can yeah. look back and we can remember some good things sometimes. Mm -hmm. We like to look back on the accomplishments and the yeah. graduations and the weddings and, the yeah. you know, the birth of your children if you have right. children, that right. sort of things. But we don't always like looking back at the mistakes. Yeah. Right, but. Yeah. I love this question. I want to ask this question of, of all of you this morning. What right. if we let our past refine us, not yeah, define us? That's good. Mm -hmm. So instead of, instead of it letting it define us where, oh, I've got all these mistakes Come or on. those bad hairstyles or whatever, <laughs> instead of that, how about they can refine us, right? That's right. And that's not, maybe a mullet's not a good look on me, right? <laughs> so maybe I can make better fashion choices in the future or even yeah. more um, of your personal spiritual journey. Hey, yeah. I don't. These things did not give me life. I want yeah. them to refine me yeah. rather than That's define good. me. That's mm -hmm. good. And the Apostle Paul, you Amen. can clap for that, yeah. The Apostle Paul, uh, who traveled around, he planted, uh, you know, 50 churches. Um, he talks about this theology of transformation yeah. to God's people. In Corinthians uh, chapter 3, verse 18, it says, And we all who were with unveiled faces mm -hmm. contemplate the Lord's glory are being transformed into his image with yeah. ever increasing glory which comes from the Lord who is the spirit. What he's telling yeah. us is that you know the closer we get to Jesus, yeah. the closer we get to him in relationship, the more we're being transformed to look mm -hmm. like him. Mm -hmm. Right? So now we, we we've got the person of Jesus, yeah. this life of Jesus we can look towards. The more we start 
spending time with him in, in prayer yeah, and in scripture, the more we look like him. That's right. Right? Have you ever spent time with someone and maybe yeah. it was in, you know, your college roommate and you start listening to the same music right. and going to the same concerts and dressing right. the same right. and yeah. all these things. The same thing is true for yeah. Jesus. True. Right? And I think a lot of times at New Year's we get these really lofty, right. I'm going to, you know, go, I'm going to run a marathon yeah. or something. And it's like, okay, if you want to do that, then great. But can I just give you a simple maybe – push in the direction yeah. I, you know i i would love if i wake up and the worship team is in my living room <laughs> and stuff like i think a lot of times we think we got to go to more church conferences and right, listen right, to more sermons answer. on tape hey if i could just give you one piece of advice if you could just implement if you're not already doing this personal yeah. time with jesus once that's a day right. if that's you're reading right. one verse right. a day i will promise that's you right. 2025 comes around your life will look completely different, different. No, it's, it's one of the biggest yeah. things you can do for your faith life just spending personal time yeah. with jesus because yeah. it transforms our life so Amen. i want to ask you two this question how can we allow god to mm-hmm. let the past refine us yeah. without it defining us instead of yeah, defining Yeah, I us. love that question. Yeah. I feel like for me, I can get really stuck when I look back at the past and I, right. I can dwell on my mistakes, dwell yeah. in shame and right. regret. And I'm like, man, it just gets me stuck to where I can't move forward. And I'm like, yeah. man, this things from my past, mistakes I made, ways I talked to people, things I wish I did differently, like they just get me stuck. And I'm like, how am I going to go forward from here? I feel like it's, even though it's a new year, I'm the same person, right? So I feel like for me, a lot of times, the first step is just giving myself grace and just coming to God. Because sometimes God has more grace for me than I have with myself. And you know who's in charge? Not me, God. So sometimes my first step, when I look back in the past, to let it refine me instead of define me, is just to say, God, I'm giving this shame, this regret, these mistakes over to you in hopes that you can make me something beautiful out of what I am right now. Right. That's really Yeah, that's powerful. You know, it's been said that experience is the best teacher, but it's a, that's a little bit of a myth. It's evaluated experience (laughs) that is the best teacher. It's stopping and saying, okay, God, when I look back, I say, God, what were you trying to teach me? Mm. Like even through the worst, darkest, hardest times of this past year. God, what were you trying to teach me? Because I guarantee if you ask that question, God's going to speak to you and show you some things that are going to change your life, what, whether they were good times or bad times. Sure, yeah. yeah. That's true. There's, um, there's a song by Bruce Springsteen, you might know, called Glory Days. <laughs> They'll pass you by, Glory Days. Yeah, right? Yeah. Some of us like to live in the glory days. Yeah. Anyone know that person that's still living up like high school? High school and they peaked yeah. in high they school and they're still telling line. you about their yeah. football record? Don't be that person, all right? <laughs> Do not be the person that is reliving the high school glory days, right? That, that's a pretty depressing life to chase yeah. after. Right what you were when you were 18, right? Yeah, yeah. Instead, right, look at God as someone who can refine That's you, know, you through your experiences yeah. in the past, right? The past mm-hmm. is a place not for residency, but it's for reference, that's right? Good. It's yeah. for reference, not residence. Yeah, you're not yeah. supposed to live in the past. Don't you can, If you were the quarterback in high school, good yep. for you, but <laughs> hey, if you're still alive, you got some more work to do, that's right? right? God's <laughs> not done with you yet, right? That's right. right. He doesn't want you to live in the past, but he wants you to use it as a point of reference for what he has for the future. So when we look back, let's let God refine us into who he's becoming or who we're we're becoming rather than who we were, right? Mm -hmm. So Pastor Ariana, kick us off with the next point here. Yeah, I love talking about the past, how we reflect on the past well and really learn what God has for us in those lessons. But another thing that I really love is just the newness of a new year. It feels like a new start, a second chance, new opportunities are springing up. There's just something so life-giving to me about a new year. I know not everybody loves New Year's resolutions. Maybe there's some ones you didn't complete from last year, and I'm in the same boat as you. But there's just something about making new goals for this year where I'm like, man, anything can happen. Like, it just gets me excited. Mm -hmm. And it's this beautiful paradox like you were talking about in your intro pastor beth where we're supposed to look back at god's faithfulness but we can't stay there we have to move forward into god's promises ahead that's good yeah and in the past the prophet isaiah told god's people this um it was a much needed reminder for them he just for context kind of talks about these are all the amazing things god has done in our past as israelites as a people god set us out of slavery he rescued us from the egyptians he sent these plagues he parted the red sea to get us out Uh and this is where we find ourselves after isaiah is just testifying about that this is um what isaiah says about god's goodness in isaiah 43 18 through 19 
But forget all that, all those good mm. things. Forget about all that. It is nothing compared to what I am going to do. Wow. For I am about to do something new. Come on. See, I have Come already on. begun. Yes. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through Hallelujah. the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. Wow. When we think about forgetting our past, we often think about, oh, yeah. I'm going to forget those, you know, old mistakes. I'm just not going to think about them, not dwell on them, and go into newness. But it's so weird here. We talk about remembrance a lot in the Bible, but it's weird that Isaiah is prophesying, hey, forget all of those good things because I'm right. going to do something even better. <laughs> I don't know if he really let, literally meant forget those things, but he's yeah. like, man, you're going to forget the last year because God's going to be so good wow. this year. Yeah, and that's what he says to his good. people. That's it's good. kind of like, you know, the saying, out with the old, in with, with the, the new. new. Yeah. I think yeah. Isaiah wrote that first. I think yeah. he was original author of that yeah and uh, sometimes when we want to move forward it's easy to get stuck right right no matter how hard yeah. we try even with a good mindset sometimes That's we can right. get stuck in things that held us back last year old distractions mm -hmm. old bad habits unhealthy patterns mm -hmm. and thought patterns yeah. or a toxic relationship it's easy to get stuck in toxic yeah. relationships that you had last year or stuck in habits and hurts and hang-ups yeah. it's easy to be the same person yeah. even though the date has changed right yeah. Yeah. But what I love yeah. about faith is that our God is a God of movement, of moving forward, of changing. These instructions, Jesus' last words before leaving earth were the Great Commission where he says, go and yeah. make disciples. Yeah. Go. That's right. So we're called to go, right. to move, and not yeah. to stay the same right. in the same place, right. but to grow and to move. And yeah. I think that's really beautiful. It's something that's yeah. new. This life isn't stagnant, but God has a lot for us. So how can we get unstuck to move forward yeah. toward what God has for us in the future? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, I want to speak to, you know, my generation here, but I, I think that the older generations can, can yeah. glean from this as well, but we'll pick on young adults. I think a lot of young adults I talk to, college-age kids, they're always changing their major yeah. because it's like, I don't know what I want to do. Like, right. I'm trying to find my my calling, like I'm trying mm -hmm. to find what I'm supposed to do. I don't feel like I'm supposed to work here. I'm supposed to go work yeah. somewhere else, right? I think that unstuck, to get unstuck, that when we feel stuck, we feel that stuck feeling, yeah. mm -hmm. is really look at the bigger picture. And I love what you said yeah. about looking at the Great Commission, right? It's really yeah. simple what, yeah. what we're supposed to do and what our calling is, right? Not always vocationally it's clear, but it's clear with the Great Commission that we're yeah. supposed to go and make disciples. Yeah. That's yeah. our, that's our, yeah. our call, again. right? Yeah. Go and make that's disciples. Right. So yeah. if you're working at UPS, right, yeah. you can... Go and make disciples that's there, right? right? Uh -huh. Knock on some doors. I don't know. That's, that's right. a great job for maybe evangelism. <laughs> I don't know. But no, I think a lot of times we get like hung up on these things of like, yeah. I got to be somewhere else. I got to be in the right. I got to move. Yeah. I got to live right. here. Right. The but no, have to be perfect. Right? God is yeah. teaching you something right now. And right. it might not mm -hmm. be the end all be all where you're at right now. Yeah. You might have some more career aspirations or you might yeah. want to start a family or whatever. That's right. All of those things are good, yeah. but he's teaching you something now. You're That's not good. out of God's Preach. will right now. He yeah. can teach you something where you're at yeah. right now. So look at the bigger picture and yeah. make disciples where you're at right now. Yeah, bloom where you're planted. Uh, you know, yeah. I'm going to get real practical with this one. Sometimes I think we need the simple things. Uh, sometimes I know we think we need the deeper theologies of the word, and I love God's word. So sometimes we need the simple things that help us get unstuck. Uh, one of them is just get close to Jesus. Like, just get yeah. closer to yeah. Jesus. Be around the people of God. Make church a priority, not just an optional uh, activity, right? And just get closer to Jesus. Some of y'all just need to get a mentor. You, you just need to get honest with somebody. Uh, if you're a parent and you are struggling with your kids, get a parent that's down the road further and say, hey, yeah. can you help me out? That's, that's what I good. did when my kids good were word. little. And I was pulling my hair out, right? Uh, and And... Keep in mind, mentors never showed up and knock at your door. Hey, can I mentor you? I've had to go out and find my mentors, right? Mm -hmm. I've had to go ask people. And guess what? I have never, now, I'm not saying it can't happen, but I've never had a mentor say, no, I don't have time for you. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> that, might, that might happen, you know. That, then move on. There'll be somebody else that does have time. But when I ask, I've always gotten that. And then the third one is some of y'all just need to get a counselor. Can we just, just keep it real practical? Hey, right? some, sometimes I, that's what you need. When I was in my 30s, many of you know some of my story coming from a traumatic home. There was addiction, suicide, divorce, incarceration, you name it. It was happening in my family. You can't not walk through that and not need some extra support, right? 
And so I found a solid Christian counselor a little over a decade ago. And yeah, it takes some work and it takes some effort and it takes some money sometimes. Thank God for good insurance if you got it. But do whatever you can to make that happen. And sometimes those are the simple things. It's been Jesus, my mentors, and my counselors that helped me get unstuck. Yes, I love how practical that is. And I feel like a lot of times, whether it's New Year's resolutions, yearly goals, we really think about it as an individual thing. But I think the cool thing about a faith community is that we get to move forward together, not just as individuals. So yes. I just want to challenge us. Where where are your goals for your faith this year? Yeah, what do you good. want God to do this that's year? Good. What do you got God to do in this community? Wow. What if God is calling you to be a mentor yes. to someone in our church mm. this that's year? Good. What if good. God is calling you to read the Bible with somebody else in our church this year? That's it just takes right. one question. Hey, do you want to read the Bible with me this yeah, year? Let's get on good. a reading plan together. Yeah. What if what if God wanted you to volunteer more this year and kind of give more this year? Whatever God is calling you to do, I will guarantee you, if you're going to be in this church, you're going to be here every week, uh, you're going to be challenged. We're going to challenge each other. We're going to push each other. And that's a cool thing about faith. When I feel stagnant, when I feel like I can't do anymore, there's people around me like Beth, Brandon, people who keep me accountable and pull me forward when I don't feel like going forward. Another great way to do that, we have small groups coming up. What if you're part of a small group this year in 2024 and God did something big in it? That's right. So I love talking about what can we do to look forward in this year. But Pastor Beth, what else can we learn about what God has for us? Yeah, you know, this Advent season for Christmas, we spend in expectancy, right? All month we're Mm -hmm. we're anticipating Christmas is coming, we're preparing, we're doing all the exciting things. And I don't know about you, but after the holidays, I get a little bit of this letdown where I feel like, uh, a little post Christmas blues. Am I the only one? Like tomorrow, yeah. I got, I'm going to take my Christmas trees down. And I'm just like, oh, it's over, right? You yeah. kind of feel sad. But here's the beautiful thing about Advent. Advent is we're expecting Jesus to come. We're celebrating the birth that Jesus came from heaven to earth, right? But here's the good news. Advent season really is all year long because mm-hmm. I've got good news. Jesus is coming back, come right? Hey. So we, we live with that expectancy all year long. Uh, Jesus even said it uh, in John 14. He says, there's a m- more than enough room in my father's home. If this were not so, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you, but when everything is ready, I will come. Jesus is coming again. Come on. And can I just tell you, we don't talk about heaven very much in church. We don't talk about heaven enough, right? Or hell for that matter. Uh, that's another topic, another sermon for another day. Uh, <laughs> but year. the reality is heaven is a real place. It's not a fairy tale. It's not fiction. There is a real place in eternity. This, ha- this world is not our home. We are just passing through. And ultimately, we need to keep the hope of heaven in focus. I wasn't planning to share this, but I'm going to share it real quick. I-, I lost a friend, a dear friend in an accident several years ago, and I was sitting and grieving. And I looked on my bookshelf, and I pulled off a book that I hadn't read uh, by Don Piper. He actually was in a car accident, and uh, the paramedics declared him dead on the scene. They were waiting for the uh, coroner to arrive. He was dead for 90 minutes. And a random guy, not a random guy, a a believer, (laughs) uh, stopped and said, ask the cops, can I pray for that man in that car? He's like, well, sir, that man is dead. He says, I I don't know why, but I really feel like I'm supposed to go pray for him. I've been in past wars, so I've seen gory and I've seen ugly. And the guy's like, hey, if you want to go pray for a dead man, uh, that's up to you. He goes and he prays for this man, and God brings him back to life. And then this man, yeah, he, he writes this book about the beauties of heaven. It took him a long time to even talk about it because he said heaven was so beautiful, there was hard to find English words to describe. But heaven is for real. And our ultimate hope uh, is in heaven. Uh, Paul had some instruction because I don't know about you. Even though I know heaven is real, I get pretty distracted by this world down here. Uh, All of the things that we got to do, right? Uh, But Paul gives us a little, I would say it's a life hack for heavenly focus. This is what Paul says. He says, therefore, since you have been raised with Christ, strive for things above where Christ is seated. At the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above. He says it again. He's saying, hey, get your minds off of what's down here. 
There's something bigger above. Set your mind up there. He says, for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ and God. And when Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. I don't know about you, but I'm just glad that I have the hope of heaven. I'm glad there's more to look forward to in 2024 Mm -hmm. than just going through the motions. That we have that Advent uh, spirit that we can live with all year long. I I don't know about you, but 2024 is going to be interesting, right? We got another election year. And if that's something we can all say, it's going to be interesting. I think we can all agree on that part. No matter who you vote for or which way you vote, it's going to be interesting. But Mm -hmm. let's not forget that we are citizens of heaven. We are citizens of heaven. In fact, I just want to jump down here. Philippians says this. He says, but we are citizens of heaven where the Lord Jesus Christ lives, and we are eagerly awaiting for his return as Savior. God wants our Advent season to become an adventure, a faith adventure all year long. It's okay. We're going to take down the Christmas trees. Sorry. When you take a good look, get a good picture before you go because it's all <laughs> going to be gone when you come back next week. But our faith adventure, that expectancy, mm-hmm. that hope that we have in heaven, that's going to be all year long. So let's get ready to step into 2024. Uh, let your past refine you, not define you. I love that. I hope you'll take that with you this week as we pray about what God has for you. It kind of reminds me of sandpaper, right? Sandpaper kind of takes that rough thing, but it makes it smooth, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, Let God refine us and then move forward into the promises ahead. Uh, We're not going to live in the past. We're not going to take up residency there. It's our reference, but it's not our residence, right? We're going to move forward as a church this year. We're going to move forward. We're going to take new territory. Hopefully, we're going to lease new space here in the mall. We're going to reach new people who need to know about Jesus this year. And always in the midst of it, keep the hope of heaven your focus. We're not living for the things of this world. I'm not living for the next election. Thank God, (laughs) right? (laughs) I'm living for the hope that Jesus has more for me. And the only thing I can take with with me after this life are people, right? So let's invest our time well in 2024. I want to invest in people. And I hope you'll come back next week because we're going to start a new series called Focus. And uh, I don't know about you, but uh, life can get blurry. Distractions can get crazy. But I just believe God is going to refocus us in a new way, individually and collectively as a church for the year ahead. Because God's got us some things for us, but we got to be focused if we want to step into them. So thank you so much, table team. So grateful for you. As the worship team comes, I want to do something just a little bit different. You know, as we spend the last few hours of this year um, and we take that time on looking back and being thankful for what God has done while we're also looking forward, God, what do you want to do in the year ahead? Uh, I just felt like the Lord said, you know, I want, I want you to take a Sankofa moment as a church. And I want you to just have an open mic. Back in the day, we used to call it testimony time, right? Where we would just share stories. How many know the word of God? There's a scripture that says we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimonies. So I have a question for you, and this is open mic time. You're going to come up here. I'm not going to give you the mic. I'm going to, I'm going to share the mic, but I'm not going to give you the mic. I'm going to share the mic, and I just want to hear if there's something uh, from this past year that just God has been good to you, and, and you want to celebrate together, would you just share? It can just be a short, it can be one sentence, or it can be one minute. We're going to try to keep it under one minute. Uh, and then after everybody shares as, as the worship team is playing, I don't know about you, but the scripture says make a joyful noise. Uh, and so we're going to just celebrate, and we're going to end this year with some celebrations. You, how many know you don't have to wait to have fun until your party tonight? I don't know what your plans are. Uh, we're going to have a party at our house, too. You're all invited. Uh, bring some food. Um, but We don't have to wait to make some noise and celebrate until tonight, until midnight, right? Uh, So we're going to start it now. So as we just uh, begin to play uh, some worship, who wants to start us out? Who wants to start us out? Joseph. Yeah, there's a lot to be thankful for uh, in 2023. Um, It was just an amazing year. So I I got all the thanks for that. But a lot of people don't know this about me, um, but I actually 
in college, my first major was pre-med bio. Um, I actually wanted to be a doctor. I wanted to be an ophthalmologist that did eye surgery uh, and did missions as an ophthalmologist. Um, and it never happened um, because I, I just, I wasn't smart enough, honestly. I, I couldn't commit to like studying enough uh, to pass the chemistry classes. It was really difficult. And I had to switch majors. Uh, I ended up being a business marketing major. Um, and I kind of adopted the belief that work is just work. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to have a purpose, especially coming from my background, my family. Um, we kind of just did work to do work. My, my dad's a construction worker and he didn't have a lot of purpose behind it. Um, and there was like a real silent longing in my heart for purpose. And I think in our generation, I mean, in the generation that I'm in, there also is just like a silent longing for purpose. We, we yearn for purpose. Um, and I didn't even know that I had this, this hidden, you know, cry for purpose. Um, and I, I was working at, at a nonprofit, and even there, I, I just didn't feel like I had a strong sense of purpose. Um, and then my boss started just acting up one day. He, he like started being a bad boss. Um, and I, I said, maybe this is my time to transition. And I transitioned and I got a, a new job at a, a project called Blue Zones Project. Um, and it's a place where I get to make an impact on people's lives like every single day. I wake up and I get to help people live a longer, healthier life. And to me, that's just like, wow, I didn't think that I could have purpose in marketing or have purpose in career. And I do. And like, I'm realizing now that purpose is a privilege. And God gave me that privilege this year, even though I, I didn't have the words to ask for it. And I'm just so grateful for that this year. Yeah. Powerful. Let's praise God. God is good. I love it. And it's been so fun watching you, Joseph, on your journey. Uh, and even, he didn't even mention God gave him a, a new house. The first time home buyer this year uh, was with a miracle, him and Ariana. Uh, who else wants to celebrate? Pastor Kim. Pastor Kim. I just thank God this year for 2023. I thank God for peace that surpasses it all understanding all understanding you know um sold out to god committed to god but 2023 i experienced a, a peace that i could not fathom i could not put into words and someone asked me earlier what do you you know what's your new year's resolution i'm not a resolution person but i begin to say god those areas of peace that were magnified in my life let that be my leading going into 2024. So I stand to testify that he is a God of peace that goes beyond our imagination, our limited imagination. I'm grateful to him for that. Amen. 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 God is good. Who else wants to share? Who else wants to share? Jeremy, come on up. Give Jeremy a hand for leading on the sound. Well, for me, it's a lot of peace within like how I used to do things. I noticed things that weren't good, weren't healthy. And within my family, too, my family are all working together. We're all doing stuff that we never thought we'd do ever because we, we just never were close to each other like that. And now we're getting close to each other. My dad is getting closer to us, doing a lot more stuff with us. And thank for thank God for them because without them I wouldn't really open out and be myself. Amen. Praise God. Thank God for the godly fathers. Wave your hand, godly man of God. Love the Albio family. Who else wants to share? Who else wants to share? What is one thing God's done that's good that you want to celebrate? We want to celebrate with you. Come on, Carl. Oh, come on. Here, we'll let ladies go first. We'll let Carl go next. Yeah, I just want to be, I'm, I'm thankful for Pastor, Pastor Beth because um, I was at home um, since the pandemic watching church online. And I was having a good time just sitting there, you know, just watching <laughs> church, praising the Lord, had my Bible, and I felt good. But, you know, uh, all my life I have been a person that, um, congregated with the people with the people you know I needed to be uh, with God's people I took my daughter to the to the uh, my granddaughter to the uh, 
from movies. And after the movie, she said, Grammy, let's walk in the mall. I said, I don't want to walk in this mall. This mall is dead. Ain't nothing to see. You know, she said, no, Grammy, I want to walk. So we started walking, and we were coming down this way, and I saw that table sitting out there, and I was like, the table? I wonder what that is, because I thought I knew everything in this mall. So I went there to look at the table, and I said, our church in the mall? And I looked, and Pastor Beth was sitting right here with her head down, and I'm reading trying to figure out what what church is in the mall and she looked up and saw me and she came out and she talked to me and she told me yes this is a table church and she explained everything about this church she invited my granddaughter to the children's church to run around there and look and I said hmm and I said I've never had church like that I said but she said well just come and I said okay I'll come and I'll try anything once and I've been here ever since <laughs> and I thank God for that <laughs> I'll try anything once. (laughs) Let me tell you, you try Jesus once, you get addicted, right? (laughs) There's something about Jesus. I remember that day, Linda. I remember sitting there, and I I remember God spoke to me. And God said, go speak to her. This is, she's supposed to be here. We serve a God of miracles. Who else wants to share? We'll take a few more. Oh, Carl, Carl, come on, Carl. I'm sorry, Carl. We didn't forget about you. So um, in January of this year, um, I was laid off from Microsoft after 25 years with the company. And so that was retirement. And uh, I wondered if God had anything for me, you know? You know, you have that 25 years of really, really intense leadership. I was a senior IT manager worldwide. And all of a sudden, all my people were gone. And all of a sudden, I was left in this hole. And God came along and gave me purpose. And I not only am working harder than I was at Microsoft with a whole bunch of college kids and a whole bunch of high school kids, I get to share Jesus. Amen. We love Len and Carl. Carl, I have to brag on you. I hope this won't embarrass you. But they they come every other week just to clean this space and help take care of this facility. Give them a hand. One more. Somebody want to share? Come on up here so everybody can see you. Wow. If I start crying, y'all cry with me. If I start crying, y'all pray for me. I'm so thankful to be here in the state of Washington um, because of God. God led me here to be here with my daughter. I had two deaths last year. I lost my granddaughter in a violent shooting violent. 18 years old, headed to the college. My mother died in November. Yes. Come on, Holy Spirit. Yes. It was tough. I don't wish it on nobody. Nobody. But when you got God in your life, right. yeah. He's there. He's a true and living God. Right. He give you strength. He give you guidance. And if I didn't have Him in my life, I probably would be blind, crippled, or crazy. <laughs> <laughs> True saying. So I got a lot to be thankful for. And I thank God for being in my life and accepting Him as a personal Savior. For me. And it's crazy because when I came here, it was in my spirit to find a church. Being new to Washington State, living here in Washington State. And I don't usually come to the mall on Sunday. I don't. I go Monday and Tuesday, I'm on all day. Or payday when he blessed. <laughs> and I was coming across here and I had been coming to the mall and I seen that tea out there and I looked in one day and I said, I guess this business, this company's out of out of business. So one Sunday I was coming to the Bronx and God spoke to me and told me to come back to this to the mall. Come to the mall. And I heard all the praise and worship when I entered this door. I said, oh, what? God, that's a church. (laughs) 
So I've been coming ever since. And I think the pastor, her husband, all the congregation have invited me in, welcomed me in. So I have a lot to be thankful for. And I love you guys and thank you. May God be with you through 2014 in prosperity. Thank you. God is good. Would you stand on your feet with me this morning?